What's going on? My name is Maroon Rhythms, and I'm going to show you guys how to properly send files to your favorite engineer. All right, let's dive in. So there's two things I'm going to go over. Number one is sending a Pro Tools session properly. If let's say you're a recording engineer and you recorded the song and you need to send it to the mixer, whoever's going to mix the song, there's a way to send the Pro Tools session uh, properly. <clears throat> So I'm going to go over that, and then I'm also going to go over how to send it properly if you are a beat maker, producer, um, trying to send the files, the individual files of the beat to an engineer to get mixed, right? So once, a once the um, artist records on it, right? So if I'm the mix engineer, usually I'm in the, on the receiving end of receiving different types of files right there are three files i need as a mix engineer to make sure that i have a successful mix for my clients uh, number one it's the pro Tools session of the recording uh, that we have here um, exactly how it was recorded in the studio and i prefer to have the pro Tools session rather than the individual uh, files of the actual vocals because i like to keep the vibes of whatever they have going on there and change what I need to change and keep what I need to keep. It's a lot easier for me to work with. Number two, I need the rough bounce, right? So like after they recorded the song and they bounced it and the artist went home with it and listened to it 5,000 times, I need that version because that's the version that the artist is gonna be stuck with and I have to keep the feeling of it even though I'm gonna try to make it better with my mix. I always keep it in my mix to compare. And number three, I need the individual files of the beat, uh, preferably, from the producer. So the producer needs to send me that as well so that I can try to make the beat sound better, but at the same time respecting the producer's creative decisions with how they originally made the beat. So anyway, let's get into it. Let's say you need to send this Pro Tools session, right? First things first, I don't like to see when I receive a session, a bunch of tracks all over the place like this. Um, I don't like to see that because it just makes me, it puts more work, more unnecessary work on my plate it's a lot more helpful if you clear the session first before sending it to the engineer. So, for example, let's say you're not using these tracks. All these muted tracks, you're not using them. Either you can highlight them like this um, and right-click them and delete them, or you can uh, hide and make an active, uh, whichever one. That way it's just out of the way. Same thing, sometimes I get sessions with all of these tracks, and I'm like, yo, what is going on? Why do we need all of this? There's nothing there, right? So delete it or hide and make inactive. Make sure it's a clean session. Um, a lot of the times too, sometimes people like to do this. They like to consolidate it. I hit option shift and the number three uh, to consolidate it and kind of make it neat. You can do that if you want to. Um, it's also up here somewhere, a consolidate clip. Um, so after that is done and the session is clean, because you want to send a clear idea to the engineer of what needs to be worked on, right? A clear session. When you start adding, when you have muted tracks and then vocals are on the muted tracks, it gets confusing unless you have specific instruction for the mix engineer to use that if they want to, all right? So to save this session now and send it, I'm going to go to File, Save Copy In, Right, and this comes up here. I'm going to select, um, I'm going to leave the sample rate that it's in. Hopefully you recorded it in a higher sample rate, like 48. Um, and then I'm going to click audio files, right? This is the big key right here. Click audio files, um, click OK. Now go to your desktop and save it, whatever you want to save it as, right? Um, and it doesn't have to be the desktop. You can save it anywhere, but save it. So now it will be on the desktop. 
right, with just the audio files folder, and you want to send this folder. So you go to a website like wetransfer.com, and you just drop this in here, and you send it over. Let's see if we can go to that. So there are other websites too, but a website like this, you get to send up to two gigabytes for free. Um, you can you get to sign up or log in, just make an account. Um, or you can not make an account, but it's much easier to make an account if you're going to do this continuously. And you would just upload the file. You can just drag it in, put in their email, put in your email, the title, and then hit transfer and just make sure that you leave it to finish transferring. All right, it may take a few minutes. Make sure it's under a few uh, gigabytes. If it's a really, really big session and it's not working, meaning it's over two gigabytes and you can't send it, um, there's two things you can try, right? The first thing is if you go back in the session and you go to clips right here, you can go to select unused and you see these blue things that will po pop up, um, the blue clips that popped up when I selected that. Those are unused files and they're just taking up space in the session. I don't have many because this is a pretty small session, but um, if you have a big session a lot will come up and all you have to do now is just go to uh, clear it even gives you the the shortcut right here where you can go to clear and then you can go to remove and it will remove the uh, the unused clips and then you can save it and then now you go to save copy in and you do it over again because it'll be a smaller file the other thing that you can do is you can right-click and compress the folder so that it will get smaller. It's really that simple. All right, so it'll become a smaller file. So look, if I right-click it here and I go to Get Info, this right here is 167 megabytes, and this zipped-up file is smaller at um, 134. So sometimes I have to do that. If I'm right over two gigs, I can zip it up and it can take me right under. Now, if you're a beat maker, producer, and you need to get the track outs over to somebody like the engineer or whoever, um, you want to make sure of a few things. Now, I'm in FL Studio. It doesn't matter what DAW you use. It's all the same thing. You just have to find where the click is, right? So whether you use Ableton or Logic or whatever, it's the same process, okay? So um, more or less. Um, but in FL Studio, you have to make sure that each of your instruments, right? So let's say you have all of these instruments here that you're using. Each one of your instruments is to a separate mixer track, meaning this is to number one. I got a clap to number two. I got a hi-hat to number three, you know, everything, all your sounds, your drums, every single thing has to be to a separate uh, mixer channel, right? At least for, this is for FL Studio exclusively, has to be to a mixer channel, all of these separate channels, okay? But what's the thing that's the same for every other DAW is how you bounce it out. So you pretty much have to uh, export it um, by going to File, Export, Find That, and then you're going to just go to WAV file, and then you're going to save it somewhere. Uh, you can create a folder here and save it wherever you want. I'm just going to put it on the desktop just for now. Um, so I'm going to press save. Um, but definitely put it in a folder because you want it to be organized right in one place. And then you're going to click uh, split mixer tracks right here. And then press start, and it will render the whole everything there. Just make sure it's a WAV file, all right? We don't want to do MP3. It's lower quality. Um, and that's it. Same thing. You would uh, just drag that folder into WeTransfer, and you can send that over. And also, um, I recommend also sending the beat over um, just a regular WAV file of the beat over, just for reference, too, because experienced mix engineers will respect the producer's choice in uh, the leveling. So um, definitely if you can send a reference over that helps too.
All right, guys, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you want to learn how to record yourself, if you're an artist or record other people, if you're an engineer, producer, or writer, I have a free training and a course on doing this. If you don't want to intern and if you don't want to go to audio school, I highly recommend it. And uh, stay tuned. I'll see you guys next time.